Hey guys, Pastor Snowd here. I'm excited to be with my friends and fellow believers, members of our church, Hans and Jen Studer. And uh, one of the joys of pastoring is anticipating with the Lord what he does, uh, not just in the present, but in the future as we follow his leading. And uh, Brother Hans and Miss Jen, they feel God's leading to uh, pursue adoption and already they're in motion on that. They've been working on and praying on and seeking God's leading. And so we've chosen to use this format just to kind of communicate their heart and then some ways that you can support and partner with them in this journey. I was thinking just today of how God used adoption in our family and allowed us to adopt one of our sons and just to see all that God is doing through him. Just uh, even this week, I prayed with him over the phone as we were talking through things he's navigating in Christian college and to see God at work in his heart. Uh, and all that's the result of that, not just today, but in the future. So we're excited to have a few moments here with the Studers. And I was thinking of the James 1 passage that talks about pure religion and undefiled is this, that we would visit um, widows, so those who have lost their spouse and specifically needs they may have, and then also uses the word fatherless or orphans. And uh, one of my burdens as a pastor through this journey we share with you, as well as what God may have for others that watch this video uh, in our church family or not, is that we would do better at ministering to the fatherless. So let's start there today. Hans, maybe you start us out with this. How how has God led uh, your family, you specifically, into what you feel like is this calling to open your home and your heart um, to letting in whoever God chooses to send your way to parent? Well, it took uh, Lord work in... Um through infertility and fostering, uh, through fostering, I learned to love yeah. s- someone that's not my own. Yeah. And it took fostering to get me there. And Jen was already ready to do that, but sure. the Lord took me through through that. That way, I can I can say I can love a child that's not my own yeah. now Amen. through adoption. Amen. And Jen, I'll ask you the same question. One of the things I was thinking as you were talking is you guys met here, right? You met in our church. Some that would be watching this wouldn't know that. But to see God bring you together in our church, not in this building, a different building, and now this next step in your relationship and all the years in between um, to this point where now your heart is open to something that God has been stirring in Jen for some time and through these other steps that may have felt like random steps, God was preparing you. It's just awesome to see that, isn't it? Jen, what would you add to that? How has God led you to the point you're open as, as a lady and as a wife and as a potential mother to, to mother in this way and to minister in this way? Um, it started when I was about 20, early mm-hmm. 20s, um, the church I was attending. Mm-hmm. Um, a missionary lady from Ukraine came and was giving her story of an orphanage that she worked with there mm-hmm. and just shared with just the sadness there of these babies and children that needed homes and loved on. And it just broke my heart. And that night, God really burdened me to adopt. I wanted to adopt right then and there, but it wasn't God's timing. Mm -hmm. I was really young, um, didn't have the money, wasn't married. So it's great seeing God opening this chapter up in our lives right now, like Mm -hmm. with this journey to start it now with, um, yeah. Amen. And, and now you're married to a man with lots of money. So, yeah. you know, <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, but it, not, not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. married men have a few expenses, overhead, right? So, um, so, you know, one of the challenges of adopting is family looking a little different, right, than maybe you anticipated. Um, and we would share some of the same struggles and heartaches in our family. I can remember some of those phases feeling like that, terminates our hope of having a child and raising a a child in a family setting. And all it was was God redirecting, not to a plan B, a lesser way of parenting, just another plan A, another way that God um, brings children into our lives and our homes. Um, So that's a struggle. And then I think, you know, secondly, I think it's, um, it's not easy, right? So leaning into adoption, there's, there's lots of, um, it involves our heart, Right, it involves some of the most intimate spaces in our our lives, um, things we care deeply about. Um, Jen, maybe let's start with you on this first one. What what has God done to convince you this is worth the setbacks, the struggles, the challenges? We'll talk about the financial piece in a minute, but but what what has God done to get you to the point? I'm I'm willing to take this step with all of the unknowns and 
just the challenges that go with it. I, um, there was definitely challenges with fostering, but mm -hmm. um, God, us, God led us to like learn parenting through that. He mm -hmm. gave us our strengths. We, he, like we said, taught us to love children that weren't our own. Mm -hmm. So we feel like we're more prepared now to adopt. Um, he gave us more strength to rely on him because this is a step of faith mm -hmm. um, financially and just, yeah, just mm -hmm. taking the next step of his leading. Yeah, and it, that is a lot of it. It's just taking a step, right, and not getting ahead of yourself and just walking with the Lord by faith, not by sight, right? I think to do adoption, it can't be by sight, right? There's so many unknowns and risk and, and, and just question marks that we have. Hans, what would you add to that? What's, what's helped you commit to this process with all of the difficulties and just the unknowns that go with it? Well, financially, the Lord has brought me from my knees when I was in college, um, down to my last dollar, I tithed. And ever since I've been given to the Lord and trusting him. Mm -hmm. And this is the second chapter of that where we have given everything mm -hmm. to something. And uh, out of saying, Lord, we trust you mm -hmm. that you're going to provide for mm -hmm. this adoption. And uh, we look forward to it. We're yeah. at peace and yeah. and trust. Yeah. Hey Amen. That's so encouraging to hear. So let's talk for a minute about the nuts and bolts of like schedule, um, the need, at least in a general sense. I, I would say as well, for those who've been a part of adoption, there are a lot of things we can't quantify, right? There's a lot of this that still is faith, trust one day at a time, doing what we can and then letting God do the rest. Um, Hans, what, what would be, um, kind of time frame in your mind that we can pray with you about what's kind of the critical period and then maybe just speak for a little bit about it. what, what are the, some of the financial, from what you know, what are some of the financial things you're praying over that our church can pray with you about? And then as we'll mention in just a moment, be able to share in that as God leads. Okay. Um, I know we have, um, over twenty five thousand to to come up with, but uh, the Lord the Lord has um, spoken nineteen thousand is okay. something that um, I think He wants the church to partner with mm -hmm. us. And um, I originally thought that maybe the middle of June or maybe the end of end of June mm -hmm. um, it'd be good to have uh, all that. Sure. So that's something we can partner with and pray with you about. And you, obviously, all of that could move quicker, right? Could move slower. And all we're trying to do is just prepare and be as ready as we can for when that placement comes. Um, what's the adoption agency you're working with? Could you speak to that maybe for a second as well, Jen? It's Lifetime Adoptions. It's a okay. Christian agency out of Florida. Out of Florida. Okay. okay. And we would have some mutual folks we know who've had success with placements through that ministry. So that's something to pray about the time frame the next two months or so here from when you'll watch this um, and the financial goal of $19,000. And we want to pray with you about that and partner with you in that as a church. And then also for those who may watch this video who are not a part of North Life Baptist Church, we welcome your participation as well in this project and would love to answer any questions you have about that in the days ahead. So I'll give you a little bit of instruction on how to give and then we'll end with just a couple words of encouragement. So if you'd like to contribute to this project, uh, Studer Adoption is what we've labeled it. Uh, you can go to northlife.church slash give. And if you go to our drop down menu, there's all the details you'll need of how to give. Also, if you'd like to give through your bank, you can do that and just designate it to student adoption. And we'll process those funds onto these needs and opportunities that God is giving to the students. We're excited to anticipate with them what God is going to do. Um, kind of this last thought. Um, so adoption is... Um, it's connected to the gospel, right? I mentioned my son praying with him this last week. One of the beauties of adoption is not just the few years that you all will share with them in the home and then even after that, but it's also the spiritual influence, right, that you each will have in the child's life as well as our church. It's been neat to see God add a lot of foster children to our ranks that we've been able to share the gospel with. Um, and so I just want to encourage you with this final thought that our our investment in the next generation is bigger than just them or just us. 
It's a picture of the gospel. It's extending the gospel, the next generation. And uh, Hans and Jen, I just maybe give us a final word. What, um, Jen, what would be your, how's that hit you? Adoption in the gospel. What's, a, what's in this that's bigger than just the physical relationship? Because it's a calling, right? You all, I can sense, feel called to this. I guess, why do you feel called and how does that intersect with Jesus, salvation, the future? What comes to mind there? Um, yeah, naturally we want to be parents. So, but yeah, um, yeah. like you said, the spiritual part. Uh, yeah, it's the child has a soul. We mm-hmm. these children probably won't hear the gospel if they're not adopted mm-hmm. or in the wrong home. So, yeah, we we want to share the gospel with them um, and further the kingdom. So. Amen. Amen. That's good, Hans. What would you add to that as we finish? Um, the Lord has adapted us. Um, yeah. And I just thought of a verse that, um, in small group that I came up with, Romans eight fifteen, for ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Yeah, it's good. It's good. So that's that's the project. These are the studers. If you don't know them now, you do. You have no excuse. And I would just ask you to pray for them, all the ups and downs emotionally of things they're navigating, the financial, um, the timing, the child. And I hope that you'll join with our church in praying for them and supporting them. Again, go to northlife.church slash give. You'll find there the drop-down student adoption. And I hope that you'll join with us in encouraging this family. And then also our prayer would be that others would do likewise, right? And then we can see as a result of this journey, you guys are on many encouraged to do the same. Hey, thanks guys for watching. Let's pray together and see what God will do over these next couple of months.